So Joe Biden, you know, the next reconciliation bill that the Democrats are going to try and pass was going to be infrastructure. We've known that for a while now. And Joe Biden and the White House has just released their preliminary plan um, for infrastructure. So let's take a look at that. So here it is. The White House is expected to unveil a $2.25 trillion infrastructure package, $650 billion to rebuild U.S. infrastructure, $400 billion to care for the elderly and disabled, $300 billion for housing infrastructure, $300 billion to revive U.S. manufacturing. Now, if you're looking at that and you're like, you see a lot of very, very large, pretty much unconceivable, inconceivable numbers, um, and you think this is a great thing, it's very underwhelming. It's very underwhelming and leave it to the Democrats to not really be up to the moment, right? To not really be up to the moment. And if you really want to know what's truly needed, what's truly needed in this country to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure that has been crumbling for a long time. I mean, buildings, roads, bridges that haven't been worked on or maintained in decades it's a it's a very large issue that we have in this country, especially when it comes to infrastructure. And this is one of Joe Biden's and even some conservative Democrats like Joe Manchin. This was a sticking point for them where they were like, we need to get infrastructure done. So I want to show you all what the you know, Democrats always say that they trust the experts. Right. And they did this a lot when it came to COVID and science and trust the scientists, which is great, which is really good. I think that's something you should be doing. You should be trusting the experts because you don't know everything and you have to delegate to people that do that are our experts in the industry. Um, so let's look at what the it, the experts say is needed to actually revitalize U.S. infrastructure. This is the uh, this is civil, the, the, the civil engineer dot org. Um, U.S. infrastructure scores a D plus more than four point five trillion needs to be invested by 2025. Now, Joe Biden is proposing literally half of that. And this is before the negotiations have even started before the negotiations have even started. And you know what happens in the negotiations, especially considering you have someone who is pretty damn conservative in Joe Biden and you have a lot of conservative Democrats. It's probably going to you know, get stripped. A lot is going to be stripped out of that, even from the proposal. That's already half as much as we need in this country. And see, that's the problem with Democrats is when there's a crisis and there's a moment for them to face that crisis, especially when they have a mandate, they have complete control of government. Same thing that happened in 2009, 2010. What do they do? They squander it away with bullshit half measures that never meet the gravity of the crisis that we're actually in. And uh, the rest of the rest of this reads the roads, bridges, pub, public drinking and water systems, dams, airports and mass transit systems in the U.S. are in need of massive restoration. This is what the American Society of Engineers said in its 2017. So this was four years ago. They were saying this. So was, we probably need more than even what this is saying. An assessment of the nation's infrastructure that comes out every four years. The organization evaluated it with an overall grade of D plus the same scores in 2013 pointing out that the country will need to invest 4.59 trillion. Okay. So it is 4.5 by 2025 to improve its condition. And once again, Joe Biden is proposing $2.2 trillion. Now let's, let's see what some of the progressives in Congress have to say about that. And you know, this was something I was interested to see because I didn't even know, I didn't even know at first that this was the case. And AOC points out, this is not nearly enough. The important context here is that it's 2.25 trillion spread out over 10 years. See, I didn't even know that because the COVID relief bill was, you know, for this year, it was a $1.9 trillion uh, relief plan. This is 2.25 trillion spread out over 10 years, over 10 years. For context, the COVID, like AOC saying, was 1.9 trillion for this year alone with some provisions lasting two years. Needs to be way bigger. So that's what AOC had to say about it. Let's see what, you know, some of the other justice Democrats like Ro Khanna had to say about it. What he had to say was with up to $1 trillion per year over the next decade, we can make per year. So he's, he's proposing $10 trillion um, with, I guess, Ed Mark and, and Deb Dingle. And he says we can make critical and productive investments in clean energy, job creation and our nation's infrastructure. So that's what Rokana saying. That's what AOC saying. 
And I'm glad they're saying those things because that is desperately, desperately needed. And there was a good tweet by my friend Blakely who, uh, she has a show with Christian Smalls. It's, it's a Smalls world. Everyone go check that out. But here's what she had to say, and I think it's spot on. Her comment was this. Leave it to the Democrats to always come to the table with the bare minimum. Like I was saying, $2.2 trillion, which is half of what the um, you know American Civil Engineer Society was saying is needed. Ha- with the bare minimum and then negotiate down from there, just like they did with the COVID relief bill. Even... Even Joe Manchin proposed $4 trillion. So Joe Manchin, who's probably the most conservative Democrat within the caucus, within the Senate, he's even to the left of Joe Biden on this issue. And almost twofold by almost two times to the left of Joe Biden on this issue. And this is before negotiations even happen. And so my question is, And I'm going to pose this to progressives because I personally feel like I have and us on the left have most sway over progressives in Congress. Why? Because they should feel like they have some type of, you know, responsibility to us as their base, as their progressive base and constituents, people who donate to them, people who go out and um, campaign for them, people who speak out for them on their behalf, defend them. I feel like it's our responsibility to hold their feet to the fire on this issue. Because this is another opportunity, another massive, massive bill, probably one of the last bills that's going to be passed this year unless they nuke the filibuster, which it doesn't really seem like, you know, there's pressure mounting on people like Joe Manchin to get rid of that because he keeps going back and forth and waffling on it. What are y'all going to do to make sure this infrastructure package is bigger? Are y'all going to withhold your vote just like those conservative Democrats are going to withhold their vote within this very bill to make sure that they get the ta- their tax cuts for their rich, wealthy friends and donors in, in these high tax blue states. So if they're willing to do that to make sure we get tax cuts for the rich, are y'all willing to withhold your vote on this package until and unless this infrastructure package actually meets the moment or even comes close to it? And these, a lot of these numbers are large and, you know, it's an infrastructure bill. A lot of people don't know exactly what that means, but what it means is you're going to be able to provide clean drinking water to everyone across this country. What it means is you're going to be able to provide public transportation, you know, actual upgraded public transportation for people. And who uses public transportation? Not super wealthy people. No, it's, it's poor and people and people in poverty that use it the most because it's the cheapest and it's most accessible accessible for them. So that's what that that also means that. So these are more than just numbers. The, this is a bill that can actually really impact and change people's lives today, five years from now, 10 years from now, really set America up to lead the world in green energy and, re, and renewable energy and actually meet the climate crisis, which we all know is looming. It's not even looming. It's here. It's already happening. And it's affecting people like people in Jackson, Mississippi, their infrastructure complete broke down, still don't have clean water there. People like and people in Flint, right? People all over the country who, because of our failing and old and degraded infrastructure, they bear the cost of that. People that are poor and in poverty. So we all understand that is the case. Now, When it comes to this bill, are y'all willing to take a stand and force this package to be better? Because if you're not, if you're not putting pressure on the Biden administration and you're not actually willing to withhold your vote, he will cave. But he's going to cave to those conservative Democrats who want that tax cut, that salt tax deduction gone. That salt tax cap gone. They want their tax cut for their wealthy friends they want it they want it in there and they're playing hardball for that and so if y'all aren't willing to counterbalance that not only is the bill not even going to stay the same it's going to get worse it's going to get worse and we need it to get significantly better and so this is my demand and i think as a left we should all come out and demand that because this is important this is another opportunity and we already missed two separate opportunities that where we had leverage and could have forced some things to happen So this can't be 
this can't be the third time we waste a massive, massive bill, trillion, some two trillion, three trillion, whatever dollar bill to try and force some actually progressive things into the bill. If we really care about the people that are struggling, about the people who need their infrastructure improved, we really care about the climate crisis like we claim we do. We have to be willing to stand up and speak out against Joe Biden and the Democrats because they're coming to the table with this bullshit plan that does not even come close to meeting the gravity of the crisis that we're in in this country.